Hello, everybody, and welcome into today's episode of the Top Cut Yu Gi Oh! podcast. My name is Sunny. I am here with my co host, Caleb. Hello! And I, I don't know why I had that. that oh, why pit. you had that hello just chambered uh, up and ready to go? Why, what was What is that called again? Falsetto. It's a, I don't know why I had a falsetto there for no reason. <laughs> Have you been listening to a lot of Queen lately? No. Have you been watching JoJo's Bizarre Adventure? No. Is it JoJo's Bizarre Adventure or Cowboy Bebop where they have the stands? That's that's JoJo. Okay, but there, one of them looks a lot like Freddie Mercury, doesn't he? No. Oh. I thought there was one that looked like Freddie Mercury. No, but JoJo has a stand named Queen, named Killer Queen. That's what it is. That's what it is. It has nothing to do with the band Queen. Okay, but aren't they all named after famous bands or musicians, basically? Uh, from part four onward. Sure. Part one, it's a color plus a uh, uh, tarot tarot sigil. Oh, okay. Like, like purple hermit, uh, star platinum. Uh, oh, I'm trying to remember some of the some of the other ones. Uh, silver chariot, emerald. I don't remember what Kakuin's Stan's name was. I have no I feel awful. earthly idea what you're talking about right now. I'm just going to be honest with you. Uh, I have never watched, read, or seen anything about... And of course, Zewado! That's going to be an awesome reference for the people that know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Number 26, Zewado, the world. Number 25, Force Focus. <laughs> Funny story about Force Focus, but we are going over here, so... Okay, so patrons, let's go. All right. A huge thank you to all of our patrons, of course. And we like to read all their names off at the beginning of the episode. So a huge thank you to Cam Yang, Austin Johnson, Kane Martin, Gate Guardian Support, HGH Cyber, Madam Vera Smugness, Marshawn Jones, Zyphorus, Zephyrius, AD, Anthony Leela, Blackwing Silver when the Ascendant is a Floodgate, Branded Fart, Damien Zink, Dank Nugs, Earth Machine, B- Best Deck, I am McLincoln. If I'm so cheesy, then I must be all American. <laughs> That's been there for several times. I know. It is, is that a reference to something? Don't look at me like that. Is it? No, it's just a joke. All American G's? Okay. All right. I I see I see the joke there. I do, but I feel like there's a reference there too. There might be, and I just don't get it either. We are plebeians. True. Anyway. Mountain Man, Oatmeal Spaghetti, Owen Alvarado, Pig, Rabina Go Chirp Chirp, Rudolph, the Hoover Dam is a floodgate. Thank you. That's true. <laughs> that one is. That is a factual statement. Oh my god, I just read the next one. Tin Dangle D's nuts. Haha, <laughs> got him. <laughs> <laughs> got him! Oh my god. I and and the 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 profile picture of the dude from the the big blue headed guy no no women uh oh from Megamind yeah Megamind yeah yeah it's a profile picture where he, you know he's like <laughs> that just makes it better <laughs> oh i think that used to be no that one's still here too okay um Unbanned number 95, Konami, understanding and reading are two different things. Virtually Saviors World, Zingus Khan, Aaron Gardner, Appaloosa, Floodgate of the Goddess. Appaloosa <laughs> is the one true Floodgate. Asami, Dragon Maidenless Behavior, Fragrant Lies, Occupy, Obsessed Deniers, Granted, Appaloosa, the Eternal, oh, Guaranteed, Appaloosa, the Eternal. Libromancer Best Deck, Maxi Solves Combo, Mystic Mind Duelist, Nordic Best Deck, Old Man Red, Pin Code 143, Ray Powell, Shockmaster Did Nothing Wrong, Slaking It Up, and VFD's Nuts. Thank you all so much for your continued support. <laughs> no thank you for all of the stupid names you make me read on a day-to-day basis. Oh, my throat hurts already. <laughs> I'm I, laughing too hard. <laughs> I just... I can't tin dangle these nuts. <laughs> got him! <laughs> There's no... no. It says, ha ha, got him. No, I know. In the name. I, I, no, I believe you. I, ble- I, I, like, I heard that the first time. <laughs> You know, this is the cool part about being a podcast. I, I can spend, we can spend the first five minutes of the episode just molding about these names. Oh, no, no, I'm enjoying this. 
I would be enjoying it more if you were the one reading it, but since I'm the one reading it, I don't know, I'm conflicted. <laughs> All right, of course, before we get too much farther in, we do want to take just a moment to thank a couple of sponsors. I know we're already getting like way into the episode, but I'm just gonna hit you with them real quick. A huge thank you to, of course, Dragon Shield Sleeves. Dragon Shield is a card game accessory maker. They make all your sleeves, deck boxes, binders, play mats, things to protect the cards that you spend all of this money on. If you listen real closely, you can hear Caleb shuffle in those cards in the background. Oh yeah. You get a little hand shuffle action. Yeah, yeah, just like that. So, of course, we want to thank Dragon Shield for sponsoring the program. If you want to check out their stuff, check them out. There is an affiliate link in the description down below. And also, very specifically, we want you to go on to the App Store for whatever device you have and check out the Dragon Shield Yu-Gi-Oh! Scanner Tool. It lets you scan cards, add them into your collection, helps you price cards, things like that, and really track the value of your collection as well as being able to stay up to date on the biggest movers in the various card games that you play. There's one for Yu-Gi-Oh, one for Magic, Ooh. one for Pokemon. Right, so for example, if a card shoots up in value or drops down in value, they have like a biggest movers up and down lists. Oh, and then if you have it in your list, it'll be like, hey, yo, offload these now. Well, it, it's more, they take the list of biggest movers and you can go through that list and say oh i have that card this card spiked up you know 30 dollars in value that's on the biggest movers and it was up. like it was like a 50 cent card before right right L look at looking at you uh scrap chimera oh i'm looking at you was it preta preta practice preta practice yeah dude oh my goodness so be sure to check out dragon show check out the app and we are going to be giving away five premium memberships to the app on our Twitter. So go onto our Twitter and check that out. I should have the post up in the next day or two. So be sure to check that out. If you would like a one year premium membership to the app, be sure to get ready for that on our Twitter. And also we want to thank Millennium Threads so much for sponsoring the program. Millennium Threads is a, they sell clothing and things like that over on Etsy. There is a link in the description down below. It's we all Yu-Gi-Oh themed and it's all fantastic. Pretty much it is, yeah. And it's wonderful. You can get things like hats and hoodies, just really great accessories for the different things. And they have things by all of your different creators. They have things for us, Crush Card Virus, just different people within the community. I absolutely recommend checking them out. Like I said, link is in the description down below. Let's get on into the to the meat of what we want to talk about today. We do have some new cards that we're going to talk about. And then, of course, later on into the episode, we're going to go ahead and get into the actual topic. Yeah. So just a little bit of a teaser for those that are interested for the later on content. We do ha want to talk a bit about something that's been having. There's been a lot of discourse around it in the Yugo community lately which is whether or not very diverse formats are better or maybe a tier zero format or a triangle format. Lots of creators have talked about this in past and recent weeks. We we're not give the our first. We, yeah, we want to give our two cents. Right, so so credit to all the other creators that have talked about this. I, I know <clears throat> Pack and Head to Head Battles, they've talked about this. I know I've seen a lot of people on Twitter discussing it. I think I've seen MBT discussing it. Farfa probably has talked about it on stream. So everybody's kind of given their two cents and we really want to take the time to discuss it a little bit in depth as well. And we really think that the podcast is a great place to do that. So if you're ready to hear that, then tune in to the second half of the program where we're going to go really in depth with that. But let's talk for now about rescue aces. Res oh yeah. Yeah. Rescue aces are a new archetype coming out in the next deck builder set in the OCG deck builder pack oh my goodness something blast well if you hadn't asked amazing defenders amazing defenders yes deck build pack amazing defenders so we're gonna start with rescue ace impulse this is a level 3 fire warrior effect monster 1500 attack 1500 defense Ooh. You can use the first and second effect of this card's name each once per turn. One, during your main phase, you can make the one effect monster your opponent controls with the highest attack, your choice of tide, unable to activate its effect until the end of this turn. 
Two, when your opponent activates a monster effect on the field, quick effect, you contribute this card from your hand or field. Special summon one machine rescue ace monster from your deck. It's interesting. Hold on, I just thought of a silly situation. Your opponent set up their board, you normal summon this guy, activate effect in the gate like a baron. They, they're like, cool, chain baron to negate, cool, chain effect, get out a different one. <laughs> and just, and they've used up their baron negate, and you just keep going. Yeah. You really can do that if you want. I mean, yeah. it's, it's a great way to play through complicated board states. Oh, yeah. Um, also, it's a fire warrior. Yes. For what that's worth. I mean, right now, it's worth, you know, good old Rhoda. Uh, next up, we have Rescue Ace Air Hoister. Level 4 Fire Warrior. Also a row to target. 1700 attack and defense. Yo. You can use the first and second effect of this card's name each once per turn. One, if this card is normal or special summoned, add a rescue ace spell from your deck to your hand. Cool. Uh, two, when your opponent activates a monster effect on field, quick effect, you can contribute this card from your hand or field, special summon a rescue ace monster from your hand, except itself. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. Next, we have Rescue Ace Hydrant. Level 1 Fire Machine Effect Monster, 0 Attack, 0 Defense. You can use the second and third effects of this card's name each once per turn. 1. Your opponent cannot target this card for attacks or card effects while you control a Rescue Ace Monster other than Rescue Ace Hydrant. So, you can't do like a dupe lock. Yeah, because it very specifically states... Except for Rescue Ace Hydrant rather than, rather than this, except for this card. Yeah. So even if you have like two rescue ace hydrants and a rescue ace uh, air hoister, they they have to they have to attack the air hoister and then they're free to attack either right. one of your hydrants. Hydrants. Two, you can <clears throat> activate one quick play spell or trap the turn it is set by your rescue ace card's effect. That's pretty good. Yes. And three, during your main phase, you can add one rescue ace monster from your deck to your hand, except rescue ace hydrant. <clears throat> it's pretty ballin'. Yeah, it's not bad. My only issue is that it's the third effect is an ignition effect. I would like it better if it was either a quick play or yeah. a trigger effect, but it is what it is. <clears throat> Next up, we have Rescue Ace Fire Attacker, level six fire machine, 2200 attack and defense. Oh, yeah, I just realized all these cards have the exact same attack and defense. Oh, yeah, similar <laughs> to the Gizmax. Yeah, so I, yeah, so Gizmax can can take full advantage of this deck. But yeah, these are all Gizmax targets. Huh. Anyway, uh, the effect of Fire Attacker. Um, you can only use the first and second effect each once per turn. One of a Rescue Ace monster other than Rescue Ace Fire Attacker is normal summon or special summon. You can special to your field. You can special summon this card from your hand. It extends itself. Cool. Yeah, good extender. Two, if a card or cards is added to your opponent's hand, except by drawing, you draw two cards, discard one. Wow, that's pretty good. Oh my god. It's potentially pretty good, I guess. I mean, that's a plus one. Yeah. Because your opponent added a card to their hand. <laughs> right. Sure, I'll let sure I'll, I'll let that resolve, and then I'll chain this, change roll. Or change roll, chain this. Um, I would... Well, when the effect resolves, this and roll both trigger. Yeah. So if you do draw chain link one, this chain link two. Yeah, you get to draw draw two, discard one, and then draw effects. Right, because you don't want to do draw second, because then draw effect will apply and you can't draw. Right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Like as soon as I said, I was like, wait, no, that's not right. Other yeah. way around. Next we have Rescue Ace Fire Engine, level five, level seven, fire machine effect monster, twenty five hundred attack, twenty five hundred defense. You can use the first and second effect of this card's name each once per turn one. If a Rescue Ace monster or monsters other than Rescue Ace Fire Engine is normal or special summon your field, you can special summon this card from your hand. Two, if a monster or monsters is special summoned to your opponent's field, you can special summon one level four <laughs> or lower Rescue Ace monster from your hand, deck, or graveyard. Ooh. That seems pretty solid. Yeah. If nothing else for the extension. Yeah. Uh... Let's see. Next up, we have Rescue Ace Turbulence, level 9 fire machine, 3k, 3k. This is the one that we were talking about a while back that looks like a lot like Machina Citadel. Yeah, but, but like red. Pretty much, yeah. It's painted red, so it go faster. I go much fast. Oh, yeah. The Orky boys say so. Um, it's Warhammer. 
40 k Why rock. did we put German accents on that? Because the orc boys talk funny. I'm just going to choose to believe you. Continue. At Warhammer 40k. Anyway, uh, Turbulence, level 9, 3k, 3k. Uh, can you lose the first, second, first, second, and third effect of this card's name each once per turn? It is, everything is a hard once per turn on this guy. On this entire archetype. One, you can banish two rescue ace monsters from your graveyard, splash them this card from your hand. Okay. Uh, two, during your main phase, you can set up to four rescue ace quick plays and or normal traps with different names. I'm just going to like, wow. I'm just going to nonchalantly go plus four. Wow. Oh, and then with a hydrant, <laughs> you can activate one. You can just immediately activate one of them. Wow. That's wow. Three, if another card you control leaves the field by opponent's card effect, target one card on the field, destroy it. This deck is just seems to be a lot of punish your opponent for doing anything. For, it really does. Come on, negate me. Do it. Do it. Cool chain effect. <laughs> Next, we have Rescue Ace Headquarters. Field spell. One, Rescue Ace monsters you control gain 500 attack and defense while your opponent controls a monster. Two. Do, okay. During... Because I didn't see you can only use so and such, such and such effects once per turn. And then I started reading this. And I was like, whoa, wait. <laughs> but okay. it's not once per It's It is. Okay. Number two, during your main phase, you can normal summon one rescue ace monster in addition to your normal summon or set. You can only gain this effect once per turn. Cool. Another searchable no double summon. All right. Once per turn, three, once per turn, you can target one of your rescue ace cards that are banished and or in your graveyard. Special Shuffle them into the deck, then draw one card. Just get a free plus one every turn. Yeah, that's acceptable. That's acceptable. Yeah. Uh, next up, we have some quick plays and traps. First quick play spell card. Rescue! There's no exclamation point. That's why I said it like that. Uh, this card is always treated as a rescue ace card. You can only activate one card this card's name per turn. One, target a rescue ace monster in your graveyard. Or, if you control rescue ace hydrant, you can target a monster in your opponent's graveyard. Instead, special summon it to your field. That's pretty good. Yeah, it feels okay. Well, because you can do the DD Crow thing where you can steal something before it has a chance for its effect to go off. Right, as long as you control Hydrant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but then, uh, but then of course you could also like tribute off one, like activate the effect because I, depending upon whether or not these say like you can only use or activate this effect once per turn, you can like activate the effect of one of your other monsters. It gets negated. Cool chain effect to tribute itself. Effect still is negated, but whatever. Bring it back. Activate its effect again if it says activate once per turn. Right. Um, just as examples of a way you can kind of manipulate the battlefield with this card. Next we have Alert! Quick play spell. This card is always treated as a rescue ace card. You can only activate one card with this card's name per turn. One, add one rescue ace monster from your graveyard to your hand, or if you control rescue ace hydrant, you can add one rescue ace monster from your deck to your hand instead. With no limitations on, like, level or anything, which is interesting. It is interesting. To be fair, you have to control a Hydra to do that. Uh, next up, Contain. Normal Trap. This card is always treated as a Rescue Ace card. Can I say real quick that I like how all these cards don't just continuously say Rescue Ace, Rescue, Rescue Ace, Alert. They're just Alert, right. Contain. But then they have the phrasing, it's always... I, I like that. I hope they can do that with other archetypes, too. That's good. I'm, so I'm that's with cool. it. I'm not going to lie. Um, okay, because this card's actual effect. Uh, one, if you control a rescue ace monster, target one effect monster opponent controls. It cannot attack. It's a fixed and negated. Also, if you control a uh, rescue ace hydrant, it cannot be used for material for a fusion, synchro, exceeds, or link, mon link summon. These effects last till the end of the turn. Interesting. Bro. <laughs> That is interesting. L let me get the uh, non-equipped, so they have to, so they have to, so they have to negate it. They can't just pop it. Right, right. Um, but it also only lasts until the end of the turn. Yeah, Phoenix Chain, but it also can't be used until the end of turn, which is sometimes all you need. Right. All right. Next we have Extinguish, Normal Trap. This card is always treated as a Rescue Ace card. One, if you control a Rescue Ace monster, target one effect monster your opponent controls destroy it and if you do control a rescue ace hydrant this turn your opponent cannot activate the effects of the destroyed monster as well as monsters with the same original name that's pretty cool honestly i think that this archetype has a lot of room to grow and be effective as an archetype oh yeah oh i mean because the deck can very easily fit like a little tiny machina engine in there um 
any fire warrior support for the level three and four fire warrior. Uh, the only fire warrior support that I can think of is fire flint. That's like generic is like fire flint lady. Right. What, what, you, what you pulling out? What you, what you thinking? Something unrelated. Oh, dang. I was like, oh, you just, I was hoping you thought something really cool. Um, no, just something completely unrelated. Yeah. Because I'm the worst. Um, and then of course, uh, goes and match and rival. Not goes, not rivalry. Goes in match is pretty good here because they're all fire. Yep. And the deck doesn't seem to care about an extra deck so far, so it does not. But everything's also different levels, so you're kind of stuck on Link and Fusion summoning. Yeah, but I think that there's an outside chance that the cards themselves, the cards themselves, support the archetype rather well. Yeah, as a very control oriented. Right, yeah. right. Again, which also goes wonderfully with, uh, like like I said, a little tiny Machina package. Oh, I think that a Machina package is uh, pretty much necessary. Oh, yeah. Because that free big 4K beat stick that just comes back and then also pop stuff. Are you talking about Ruin Force? Yeah. Oh, he's 45. Oh, I thought he was 4K. Never mind. I think he's 45. Yeah. But yeah, in a, in a, cause, yeah, because then you have Ruin Force, uh, Fortress, and Citadel. Well, yeah, Ruin Force, Fortress, Citadel... And maybe even gear frame as a normal summon. Yeah, as an additional normal summon, as as opposed because because rest of them can special summon themselves in one way or another. Yeah, so you can probably get away with it. I'm not. We're not honestly big even up. maybe a small theory in package. May, yeah, maybe because just, Regulus is a machine. Yeah, but he's in. They don't care about attribute. I keep thinking they. I keep thinking they care about attribute. Right, they're all fire, but they don't actually care about attributes. No, no, I mean the uh, Therians. But then I remember. Wait, no, they don't care. Right, that's just trains that care. Yeah. So. Choo choo. All right, next we have a new card from Darkwing Blast, which is a f- Frecky on, the Runic Fangs. Let me look. F R E K I. Frecky. F R E K. I think that's Freaky. Freaky the Runic Fangs. Level 5 Dark Beast Fusion Effect Monster. 2,000 attack, 0 defense. Materials is 2 Runic Monsters. You can only use the third effect of this card's name once per turn. 1. When an attack is declared involving this card in the extra monster zone, you can banish the top two cards of your opponent's deck. 2. Neither player takes damage from battles involving this card. 3. If this card on the field is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can target one runic quick play spell in your graveyard, add it to your hand. Seems interesting. Definitely. Um, also, there's supposed to be another... Uh, there's this, this this card, like the previous two fusions, mm-hmm. is also supposed to have a twin. So, in theory, we could see another twin coming. Yes. Another, another similar card to this. His name is Gary. No shot. It is. That's Jerry. That yeah, that would be close. Yeah, that would be closer to to uh, Jerry. It's G E R I. Right. I'm terrible with with some with some of the with some of the more weird Norse pronounce pronunciations. I think that re- in reality, this card is fine, but the rune Mister Rune archetype kind of just needed more things to put in the extra monsters on just more extra monsters in general oh yeah because i only had two right i think they might have had three but which were uh, yeah close. uh the only two i remember were hugan and munin but that's because they're twins so i'm gonna choose to understand what you're referencing there oh uh hugan and munin are odin's um ravens that fly oh, around yeah, yeah, that fly yeah, around yeah. the world and tell him what's going on oh okay actually i do remember that yeah and then uh and only then, because i watched thor love and thunder recently and they referenced thor's ravens it's odin's ravens that's what i meant that's what um I meant. and then i'm tired. gary and jerry and uh freaky are the pair of wolves what's their purpose though i don't remember you're like biting things growling a lot hold on hold on they they howl relentlessly I just am. just constant howling. Uh, or two wolves, which are said to accompany the god Odin. They're they're literally his pet wolves. Oh, not dogs, wolves. That's boring. I mean, the king, the king, the king of of Norse gods themselves would not settle for a mere dog. Well, I mean, wh- wolves are where it's at. I mean, why not like bears? Um, 
because bears are, uh, aren't, aren't domesticated. Neither are wolves. There was a time when we had domesticated wolves. They're now dogs. Yeah, but bears are cooler. Truth be told, I think the coolest uh, animal that could be a pet in like a Norse theme is probably actually a boar. What? No shot. The golden boar. No shot. Created by the dwarves as a uh, as a wedding gift for Freya. Maybe, but no shot anyway. What? Hold on. What is not cool about a boar made of gold? That it's not a bear. Uh. Eh. Yeah. There's uh, no fixing that it's not a hold bear. Hold on. Speaking of bears, I, I need oh. I, I need to share this fun fact. Oh, I've got to know where this story is going. So, in Dungeons and Dragons, the 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 uh, the realm that the, that the main world, the main game takes place in, is called Forgotten Realms. In the far frozen north, you're talking way too fast. Sorry. In the far frozen north oh, of the Forgotten Realms, of the Forgotten Realms, there is a grouping of Goliaths, which are like half giants, okay, who are all cursed with lycanthropy. Oh. They're were polar bears. Oh. Were bears are <laughs> were bears. Were bears are lawful good. So the were polar bears, whenever they uh change into their lichen forms, sure. um they just like roam around in blizzards and help people. <laughs> they should have just made them St. Bernards. The f- there is a joke among the D and D community about were bears because they're lawful because they're lawful good when they transform on a full moon they go into a lawful good rampage. I must help everybody. So people wake up the next morning. It's like, where did this orphanage appear in the middle of the road? <laughs> Why is it built to code? <laughs> Why is it built to code? <laughs> <laughs> Just overnight, <laughs> lawful good rampage. That's I love that. That's a question. Why is it built to code? Yeah, because not, not only not only was not only was the orphanage built in the middle of the road overnight, it is to code. It is to OSHA oh my code. Goodness. <laughs> Why is it to code? Lawful, lawful good rampage. I'm sorry, you said bear, and maybe you remember the 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 silly wear polar bears. Well, I I rest my case that bears are cooler. But I mean, there's also were sharks, were buzzards, were tigers, were jackals, were rats, were wolves, were ravens. You know, I. Were sharks, though! The real question is where do you find them? Under the ocean. I meant were animals in general. Oh, all over the place. Fun fact uh, were sharks are actually not cursed, they are blessed by. Uh, the, un- the by the uh, chaotic evil goddess Umber Lee. I will not dec- say her title. I like to keep this show PG-13. That's the only reason that I haven't made a wear joke. I've got a great one in the chamber and I just, I can't bring myself to say it. Yeah. <sighs> I th- hold on, I think we're allowed one one curse here. Alright, then you can wear these nuts up on that chin. <laughs> but no, 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 no. Her official title amongst her amongst her worshippers, Umber Lee, is the Bitch Queen. All right, great. Now we have to put an explicit tag. Thanks, Caleb. We get one. You get okay. We get one. We, get, we one. get one. Moving on, I can talk about this. Hey, if you're underage, go back to re-listen to that part, but cover your ears when you re-listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> they knew it was coming. I said, okay, I'm gonna say it now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. All right, listen, hey, we're, we're going to take just a moment before we get into our main topic, and we're going to talk about our sponsor, ETB Games in Alexandria, Louisiana. Super cool people. Absolutely. ETB Games is, of course, our locals, again, in Alexandria, Louisiana. They host weekly as well as monthly Yu-Gi-Oh! tournaments, and they also have all of your <laughs> trading card game needs. They have singles and sealed product for Yu-Gi-Oh, Match the Gathering, Pokemon, Digimon, as well as binders, playmats, deck boxes, whatever you need for the card games that you love. <coughs> they also have everything that you need for all of your tabletop gaming needs, such as figurines, dice, paint for those figurines, books, giant table size playmats to put over the table to play your tabletop games on. If you're interested in any of these things, or if you just want to come hang out, 
be sure to check out ETB Games. And if you're if you need more information, you can always either hit us up in the Discord server or they actually have the ETB Games account in our Discord server. So with that said, check them out. Their link is in the description down below. And thank you all for supporting the podcast. So let's get on into our main topic of discussion, which is, of course, we want to talk a minute about formats. Oh, yeah. Specifically, we're, as we said before, we're, we're, we're going to be talking about tier zero and triangle formats. First, I think we need to... Or diverse formats. Yeah, and diverse formats. First, I think we need to de- need to defi- specifically define what tier zero and triangle is. For, and even, I would even say we might have to define what we consider diverse formats. That's fair. That is fair. Um, let's start Let's start big and go small. So, diverse. Sure. I would call a diverse format any format where you really have... Five there, or there's, six There's decks. kind of different levels of diverse formats, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, a diverse format can be a format where you have, like, four or five or six decks... Which is fine. It's not crazy, but it really gets crazy when the format gets like super diverse, where you have 8, 10, 12, 15 decks that are all just competitive. Yeah. Which is. I, w- I would call where we are right now very diverse. Right. Our current format is diverse. I, you, you can go to any tournament and you can lose to literally probably 15 plus decks. You can lose to Punk Theory and Synchro. You can lose to just adventure punk synchro. Yeah. You can lose to Sword Soul, Despia, Marincess, Salamangrate, Dino, Din- Dinosaur, Dinomorphia. You can lose to PK. You can lose to just, I mean, that that's what, 10 off the top Burning of my Abyss? finger? Yeah. Tra- Trap BA is still a thing. Yeah, well, I just, PK, BA, whatever. That whole kind of lumped together rank three turbo. Absolutely. Yeah. Whether it's the more controlly trap variant or the super explosive bleh variant. Or the adventure variant. Yeah, or the adventure variant. I, I-, I like the description of the bleh variant. Right. There's so <sighs> many different decks right now that I would consider competitive. Wait. You got the plant deck. We even say plants. Yeah. And Dragon Link. Absolutely. Dragon Link I- is I a think very competitive deck. I think we're at like 16 now. Sky Striker. 17. No, I think we're at like 13, but the point stands. Yeah, yeah. Sky Striker, like I said, there's also literally Eldritch, Mystic Mine. Yeah. the Yeah, and then like even our Eldritch, you have like your standard Eldritch, you have Synchro Eldritch is still a thing. Tri Brigade is still a deck. Yeah. Uh, Cybers Eldritch. Technically, um, Lyrless Tri Brigade is still technically a thing. It's just nowhere near as good. Right. Because all they lost was a single uh, Recital Starling Search. Well, they usually ran three Recital Starling. Now they're on one. Yeah, but like, but like in your normal combo, you'd only make two. Still, the point stands though that there's so many different decks that are perfectly competitive and perfectly viable. Very so diverse. That w- that's what I would call a diverse format. You you have kind of different levels of diverse, where you have extremely like very really super diverse, like which we got is, going on right now. Right, or you have kind of diverse which is like four to five to six decks edison format i think is a good example of that oh no 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 no! edison no? is very very diverse edison has 20 plus very competitive decks fair enough but i would say a four to five to six deck format you know what deck we still we didn't even mention through all of that what albaz i said despia oh okay yeah Okay. I don't know why. I guess my brain didn't hear Albaz and just kind of went, oh, we didn't talk about Despia. Right. So I think I, I think I did it. If I, if I didn't, then there you go. Yeah. But I think when you look at overall, let's, a good example. Oh, Toss Format. Ta- yeah. Because you had Thunder Dragon, Orcus, Salamangrate, and Sky Striker. Mm-hmm. That's four decks known as one of the better formats of all time. Oh, yeah. Well, less a format and more of like a, an era at this point. A fair, year. It's fair like basically enough. lasted a year. Yeah, that that's entirely fair. Uh, so moving right along. Um, and then we got... Triangle. Uh, triangle. Basically means that there are three main decks that are around. I think the most famous in our, in our minds would be uh, Wind Up and Zector Dino Rabbit format. Right. Where it was kind of rock, paper, scissors, where 
Uh, if you're where if you're playing in Zector, you lose to I don't remember what direction the rock paper scissors went there, but I th I th think in Zector lost to Dino Rabbit, but Dino Rabbit lost to Wind Up, who lost to in Zector. Right, it was something I, along those lines. Yeah, or it could have been the other way around. Right. Um, technically, <laughs> I think I think in Zector had the good Wind Up matchup because Wind Ups would like discard one of their Insector monsters, and then they would normal summon it and equip it from the graveyard. Yeah, yeah, they could just they just didn't care about get, about their stuff getting discarded. If I remember correctly, I don't know, that was a yeah. decade ago, so it's kind of hard yeah. to remember. Um, but. Technically, on a very technically level here, Dragon Ruler was a triangle format. Y yes. Because there were... Technically. there were three decks that were run. Right. Do you know what they are? Dragon Ruler, uh, Prophecy, or Spellbooks. Yeah. And Evil Swarm. Yes. But Evil Swarm was at like, what, 5%? Yes. And then the re other 9-5% was split between uh, Dragon Ruler and Prophecy. Right. I'd call it 55-40. Something like that, yeah. So the next... The other... There's one more other triangle format that I can think of. You're going to laugh. Modern Goat is basically a triangle format. It really is because it's uh, Chaos v. Warrior v. Goat Control. Right. And it just kind of cycles between those three decks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, pe because people are just kind of like, well, everyone's playing uh, Chaos. I'm going to play the deck that beats it. Warrior. Warrior. Well, now everyone's playing Warrior. I'll play the deck that beats it. Goat Control. Well, now everyone's playing Goat Control. So now I play Warrior. I'm, 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 I mean, uh, Chaos. Yeah, back to Chaos. Right. It's a vicious little cycle. And next, you have the tier zero. The tier zero format, right. It's where there's one deck you play to win. Right. Tier zero formats are actually defined by when 65% or more of the meta is defined by one deck. But there is absolutely a... There's another way that you can define it, which is less... What's the word I'm looking for? Less empirical, right? It's not and as more, set in stone of a number. And more just um, like the top eight of every single tournament is all this deck. Right. So some of the tier zero formats we have. Goat format. Uh, uh, Teledad. Teledad format. Uh, <clears throat> Dad return. That, that was a very short time, but yes. Yes, so you have Goat, Dad Return, Teledad. Man, Dark Arm da Dragon in two of these. It was a powerful card. It still kind of is. Yeah. Then um, you have... Uh, and then wasn't uh, Zodiac format also tier zero? Yes, but you, before that you had Pepe. Yeah, Pepe. Pepe, then Zodiac, then Spiral. And I don't know if we've had a tier zero format since Spiral. I don't. I don't think so. But Zodiac, we're talking a 100% representation. Yeah. At YCS, I think it was YCS Pittsburgh 2017. I don't think Zodiac it would... had a no. It had 100% really? representation every... in top 32. Oh, okay. I'm about to say in the entire tournament, every single person there well, was top 32. Okay, yeah, yeah. It it generally, is... that 65% is top cut. By the way. Oh, fair enough. Uh, okay, yeah, that, that's fair. Right, which is somewhere around like 22 of top 32, somewhere. In yeah, 22, 23, something like that. Yeah, oh yeah. So, um, but generally, if you look at what's funny is Dragon Rulers, which are maybe one of the best decks of all time, were held back from being tier zero by Prophecy, which was a very good deck. Sure, it was a good control strat, but I might actually consider Drag. So, Dragon Ruler had. Spellbook had a high play rate, but it didn't have a really high win rate. The only reason Spellbook could win was because Spellbook main decked like 13 cards for the Dragon Roller matchup. Mm hmm. And, and they Dragon Roller side. And they could draw into them so easily. Right. So Spellbook will. They, they main decked like 12 to 13 cards for the Dragon Roller matchup. The issue was so did Dragon Roller. So, when Dragon Ruler would go into the mirror match, they'd be prepared. But the issue is, if they go up against Spellbook, Dragon Ruler's answers in the side deck were better than 
a lot of spell books answers in the main deck, if that makes sense. Yeah, it, main and side. Right, so Dragon Roller would side like 13 for spell book. <clears throat> yeah, they would just switch their dragon outs into into spellbook out. So then you have a swarm just in the back of the room. Hi guys, I'm here. Pretty much, right. Negate. So the discourse here comes from not defining what these formats are, but talking about which format people prefer to play in. So I think the best way to really break this down would be first we can talk about tier zero pros and cons yeah kind of go in the reverse order right we triangle yeah. pros cons and then diverse format pros cons so let's start with tier zero mm -hmm. you can give a pro i'll give a con you give a pro i'll give a con or well hold on. let's do pro con like i give a pro and a con then you give a pro and a con sure go for it okay uh I'll, pro I'll just have to come up with this off the top of my head let's go fair enough uh pro everyone's playing the same deck so it's very skill uh, skill intensive yes absolutely yeah it's a lot less just oh i have a, i look i had bad luck and i got matched with somebody when my deck has a bad matchup just due to the way the deck works right everyone's playing the same deck con everyone's playing the same deck right <laughs> um so the game can get very boring very quickly right particularly if you if you're going into a two-day tournament and you're just playing the same deck over and over, over and, and over. over. Right. You go through like eight rounds day one of the exact same combos and plays and cards. You might see it seven times. Yeah. And then going into day two and literally everything is the exact same. Right. Absolutely. Again, great because it, it, at that point your skill shines through. Terrible because you see the same cards over and over again. Right. So I'll give another pro. I think that in a in a tier zero format, it's like you said. I want to highlight that the, the skill intensiveness mm -hmm. because it turns into not who knows their opponent's deck better. It's who knows their own deck better. Exactly. So if if I'm playing you and it's the Sword Soul Mirror, and I and I know that I've been playing Sword Soul Mirrors for a long time, right? But you are not really familiar with, you're just picked up the Sword Soul deck and you have a general idea, but you don't know the ins and outs like I do. Yeah. Then that means the person that put in more work and has spent more time playing the deck is going to have the yeah. upper hand. Is going to come out on top nine times out of ten. Right. Probably not nine, but because there is still luck variance of. Right. Yeah, but. And the next, my con is that when a deck is tier zero, that means it's the best deck in the room, bar none. Oh yeah, which means the well, next balance is going to get hit. No, that's not my con. No? My con is that means everybody wants those cards. Fair enough, so it's always an expensive format. Yes, uh, tier zero formats are almost always expensive as hell. Like, I think the only exception is a, is a tier zero format because they release like one card as a common that just kind of glued everything, all these other old cards together. Yeah, but then all the old cards get expensive. They're, yeah, yeah. They're, even look at the Despia deck. Most of that deck came in a structure deck. Yeah. So what happened? Branded openings, or, which is an old super, are yeah. $30. Oh, yeah. And then uh, Guardian Chimeras, which is just kind of a mid-fusion. Oh, no. It's very good. Oh, yeah. But like all the other fusion decks are like, I have better things to fuse into. Right. Which is why I say it's, it's the only reason why I say it's mid. Right. $70 card last time. Last time I looked. Uh, I looked they've pretty much always been around 50 Okay, cool. I remember at one point looking and they were like 70 I was like, uh, no. Right. It's probably like on pre-release or something. I mean, one of the Albaz Fusion monsters was, I want to say... I think it was the Belt. No, Masquerade. I don't remember which one it was. One of them was like literally a 2 or $3 card and now it's like a $40 card. Yeah, because people didn't keep them. Right. Because there were two dollars. It's not that great of a card. Branded fusion is a heck of a card. <laughs> right. So that's the issue is yeah, but when a deck is really good, even if a lot of it was printed in low rarity, that happened in Despia is not tier zero. Imagine what would happen if Despia was tier zero. Oh yeah, no, 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 no. I mean branded openings would probably be seventy, eighty dollars. Guardian right. chimeras would probably be over a hundred each. 
Right, it, it gets worse in my opinion. Yeah, the yeah, like the the game, the cost of the game itself just goes just skyrockets catastrophically. And I mean, I do in fact mean catastrophically because I mean, Teledad was what fifteen hundred dollars to build more. Teledad was fifteen hundred dollars for like five cards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Teledad, I mean, when some you of them were only price cards at the time. Yes, that's part of the issue. Yeah. Um, and we don't have that issue now. I don't think we're gonna have a tier zero format where you have to run prize cards to win. Yeah, I don't see that being an issue anytime Cause, ever cause like, again. Because like all the prize cards are mid, either mid or you just straight up cannot. You're straight up not allowed to play them. Well, that's world's prize cards. YCS and SJC prize cards. Well, yeah, I was just well, saying. Now YCS ones are usually mid. If they're not mid, then the last really good one we had was Minerva. But I just don't see Minerva as I don't see that happening again. No, no, that, I I think that was a fluke. Right. But, uh, but I meant prize cards in general. You're they're either mid or you're not allowed to use them. Right. <clears throat> so, but yeah, but like I said, it's just catastrophically expensive to play in a tier zero format. Right. As opposed to diverse or uh, as opposed to a diverse format where the only expensive cards are. Expensive staples that literally anyone can use, such as uh, Lightning Storm and Forbidden Droplet. But that's getting into Diverse. Yeah. Triangle. Yeah, sure. Give me a couple of pros and cons. Pros. Uh, pros of Triangles is that there's still a skill set there mm -hmm. because there's only three decks in the room. So then it becomes, cause then it comes down to, and usually they're rock, paper, scissor formats, as I like to call them, where it's one deck beats. Like, deck A can beat deck B, deck right. B beats blah, blah, blah. Like, scissors beats paper, and paper yeah, beats yeah, rock, yeah. and rock beats scissors. Yeah, exactly. Um, So then it comes down to how good, how good are you, not in your good matchup, in your bad matchup. One of my favorite jokes from the new Thor movie was Korg. Do you remember Korg? Yeah, I love Korg. The big rock guy from He's the great. Thir third one. He said, it's okay, just a big pile of rocks, nothing to fit, unless you're a pair of scissors. <laughs> well, no, no, because in, in the previous Thor movie, <laughs> and then he goes, "Little no, rock paper scissors joke." No, no, because in the previous movie, he made another rock paper scissors oh, may, joke. May, maybe hold on, maybe that's where I'm thinking this joke's from because we watched all four of them in one day. Oh, okay, no, 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 because they, they did kind of run together. Yeah, no, no, because in a previous movie, he had made a paper, he made a uh, paper beats rock joke. Oh, okay, I'm pretty sure that he said, I'm pretty sure it was this movie where he said, "Yeah, yeah, it has to be nothing to fear unless you're a big." Unless you're a big pair of scissors. Yeah, because I think that was in Blood and Thunder. Because I haven't. That's the one I haven't seen yet. Love and Love Thunder. And Thunder yeah. Thank you. It's yeah. like that's like the one I haven't seen yet. So you gave me a pro, or okay. give me, or well, you gave me half of a pro. Finish your pro. And give yeah. Me a uh, what was I saying before? Oh yeah. Okay. okay. Like I said, because because then it comes down to your skill, both with the uh, with the mirror, your good matchup, and your bad matchup. Your bad matchup is, go is going to be the big thing that. Uh, kills you or means you come out on top. If you can like get a really good, really good at the bad matchup, you're you're pretty much set. Right. Um, but then you also have a better idea of what other what other people are doing. Some other random text that might just fly out of nowhere. Like uh, a great example would be, oh, that deck has a bunch of fire monster, two hundred defense. I better bring something to stop her kindling. Right. As an example, because we're kindling, uh, the, you know, ghost spell stops rekindling. Yeah, I mean, I mean, at this point, we're kindling. Oh my god, if it was playable. Oh yeah, we're kindling is a heck of a card. Jesus, just I, I get a free link four plus an extra body on board. Thank you. Give me your con. Look, my biggest con though is that there's a lot. There's still a lot of that 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 then introduce starts introducing a lot of variants. Right. Um, to where. Okay, this this matchup is so bad that I have to open a, I have to open this one card that I can run three of. So there's a three and forty chance I'll have I'll have a fighting chance against my bad matchup. Right. But then there's a thirty seven forty I just lose. Right. It, it then it then kind of becomes this defeatist attitude for some people, um, to where oh I got nothing but my bad matchup all day. Right. You know I. Which can entirely happen in a rock paper scissors format, I know, because I've seen it happen. Yes, it has happened to me. I played Dino Rabbit. 
end. Not that entire format. No, no, no. And like at the tail end of the format. Right. Yeah, like like they just reprinted everything so the deck was actually fairly cheap. I had, I had picked it up and went, cool, went in a tournament and just got my bad matchup. Every <laughs> single... I got wind-ups. <coughs> Every single match. Hey, it really do be like that. And the funny part was wind-ups were starting to come out of vogue because people were predicting the hunter ban. Right, less people were running wind-ups and then right after Carrier's End Maiden got limited, that next format, it was the best deck. Yeah, because they hit uh, Insectors and Dino Rabbit too hard. <laughs> yeah, Insectors they nerfed into the ground by limiting Hornet and Dragonfly. And Diner Rabbit, I want to say they... I think they... Uh, semi Tour Guide and Rabbit. Yeah, and then they also... They did something else. Yeah, they did something else, too. I don't remember what else they did, but the big thing was that they semi-limited Tour Guide and... Uh, Tour Guide and... Rescue Rabbit. A lot, now, like, a bit, like, a big thing about that, though, is that's about the time when people started playing more interesting uh, level 3 fiends. Like, for a while, I was playing Possessed Dark Soul, uh, some people played Turbus from the Underworld. Yes. Oh, I have such memories of Turbus. I pulled one of the sneak peek and immediately turned around and sold it for like 70 bucks. Right. So kind of concisely, what is your, what's your most, your con? Oh. Really concisely. Yeah. Uh, hmm. How would I word that a little more concisely? Uh, basically, it would, if I, if I had to think about it, it would probably be, that there's that in a rock paper scissors. Oh, they they. Oh yeah, hold on. I need September 2012. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm, um, I'm looking a, at the ban list. Yeah, to see exactly a, what happened. In a rock paper scissors format, there's always a chance of you getting nothing but your bad matchups every single round. Right. It, you know, there's there's just that big red variance that just will absolutely pummel you into the ground. So they limited Dragonfly and Hornet. They limited Zen Maiden. And then they semied Rescue Rabbit and Tour Guide. Okay. So, yeah. and they also semied Pot of Duality for what it's worth. Actually, yeah, that, that's pretty big. That's pretty big semi limit. Yeah. Um. But yeah. No. And then from there, Dino Rabbit was still playable, but Wind Up just kind of went. Eh. Right. And during that time, they didn't. They did release new product, but it was all awful. It was all terrible. I, I remember that. Yeah. Like, I think that's... Well, I mean, no. 2012, 2013, it was good stuff. Uh, Abyss Rising. Oh, yeah, yeah. It wasn't long after that that we got into Mermails. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, like, in between Abyss Rising and that ban list, it was not a lot going on. Yeah. All right, so <clears throat> my pros and cons for the triangle format. You have my biggest pro is that it makes side decking really easy. Because hmm? you know what to expect. Right. And you have this in tier zero formats too, to a certain extent, but your side decking in a triangle format, it lets you prepare an adequate number of cards. You, pr you put maybe six or seven cards in your main deck that are kind of generic and are going to do something against all matchups. And then when you go into the sideboard, you can have five or six cards dedicated to each of those matchups, to the mirror, to your bad matchup, to your good matchup. Yeah, ex especially if there's overlap. Right, absolutely. So it gives you a way to prepare a little better. And that's the best part about a triangle format is you know what to expect, and sure, you may slip against, slip up and play against a rogue deck here or there, but that's fine as long as you have a good idea of what you, to expect. But then also you go into tournaments feeling more prepared. Absolutely. Because you know you know you know what you've play tested for. You know what you've play tested against. You know what the three major decks do. So you're way more prepared for the tournament. Mm -hmm. But you're con. So this is actually pretty similar of a con to tier zero in that triangle formats can also be really expensive. 2012 was one of the most expensive times I've ever played the game because not only there are staples that overlap in the, in the three decks a lot of times, 
For example, in 2012, Tour Guide was in all three decks, and Tour Guide was somewhere around like $150 a copy. Mm -hmm. At one point, it spiked up to close to $300 a copy. And you had to have three to play the format. It's not like now with something like Forbidden Droplet, which like you probably should have three, even though it's expensive. But Tour you Guide, you had to have three mm -hmm. in all any meta strategy that so that was a minimum of 450 dollars out the gate yes so it there's even now you do have things like ash blossom which are relevant in every deck that you play and that's why they're 40 dollars a copy no they're 30 and they're, they're trending down oh fair enough but they're they are about 30 i think they're trending down because like i think the structured deck crystal beast is supposed yeah it's to have got a it range. so that's kind of affecting, yeah. affecting it so pricing can still be an issue why don't you give me something for diverse formats okay pro for diverse formats almost every single game you're going to be facing something different which is fun because you get to see a lot of different strategies a lot of different cards getting flung around it is interesting yeah um you know it, it, like again like the recent uptick of of uh, Marenses players right which uh i've actually been i actually picked up the deck myself and i'm really enjoy i really enjoy it right right um again because you know i'm used to playing dino and all the different colors and it's like eh but then you get Marenses with all the nice blues and oranges and oh, right. just it, it's nice on the eyes because it's different it's a splash yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, then of course I also get to think about other cards I never would have thought of before. Like, it reminded me of Moray of Greed, uh, Surface, right, Salvage, right. Like, old cards. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh man, these are all great cards. To be fair, like I think it was Surface you can't use because they're cybers. Right. I can't remember between Surface and Salvage which one was type and which I one can was attribute. Never remember the difference. Yeah, I've got both. So right. Yeah, it, whenever I'm deck building, I can look at it and be like, okay, cool, this one. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, but basically, pro is you can see a lot of cool cards. Right. Con. You never know what you're going to go up against. So it's kind of luck based on your sideboard and, and uh, main deck. Right. Like hand traps. Yeah, there's going to be like these generically good ones like Ash Blossom. It's just good against every single deck. But then from the there, it kind of just everything else just entirely depends on what you expect to encounter. Um, right. Because you might decide, well, I'm a deck in roll for uh, uh, flu for for flu wonderies and what's another deck that that rolls good against? Some some Despia builds. Yeah, let's just say Despia in general. And then you can go to a tournament and never see a single one of them. Right. And then the trolls are just sitting there useless in your main or side. Right. Um, same thing with Ghost Ogre. Uh, My great example is Harpy's Feather Duster, Twin Twister, and Red Reboot. Yes. It's, you one can, it's five cards that you could dedicate in your side deck in every deck. for ba Against back row. Yes. You may never see back never row. never see it. The issue, though, comes then if you don't side it. And you come against a back row deck, you just auto lose. Yep. Because you don't have any of the outs. Yep. So you have to deck them in. It's ah, oh, it's awful. Yep. So you end up. So you end up not. So, in, so no matter how prepared you actually are, you end up going in tournament feeling very unprepared and constantly second guessing your right uh, sideboard. Like I'm like the last time I went to, I didn't. I ended up not playing Nibiru. Right. Which was a meta call because I was expecting to see a uh, I was expecting to see a whole bunch of Despia, right? Which Nibiru is kind of useless against. Yeah, Nibiru is very mid against a lot of decks right now. Ended up going to be fair out of the four rounds I think there were I saw yes. I played against Despia twice. Right. I lucked out and that was the correct meta call for my day. Right. Other people will not be that lucky. So my pros and cons would be, I think a pro for a diverse format is that you could sit down for eight rounds at a tournament and see eight different decks which i understand is kind of the pro that you gave too but it's worth talking about because there's so many different ways to play the game mm -hmm. for you and your opponents so many strategies right and the, there's another side of this, which 
it stands to reason if both tier zero and triangle formats are kind of expensive really diverse formats are by comparison relatively cheap mm -hmm. compared to other formats where everybody's running the same cards here where you have everybody running 15 different decks yeah you can i mean sure there's a certain amount of overlap with staples which is why things like ash blossom forbidden droplet but individual yeah but individual deck cores right now uh in a diverse format like this like we kind of got going on right now are right. actually really cheap right so if you want to play a competitive deck you can get you can play something like salaman great for cheap you can play tri brigade I, for fairly cheap i think VW. the most i think the most expensive um salad card is access code at like 40 right but that's a generic staple right there's so many ways to play the game in a diverse, diverse format yeah. that it's a good and a bad thing because that's the major con is i think in a diverse format you'll see more floodgates and things like that where oh well i can't hit everything in the format with these 15 side deck cards so i'm gonna make six or eight of my side deck cards floodgates that way i can have one card that hits five or six different decks yeah uh for example i just so happen to all be the same type i can run rivalry with no problem right i just and so happen i can hit a bunch of different decks i just so happen to all be the same attribute i just so happen to all to where none of my monsters share anything right so i can run goes in match or tikaboo yeah um, or I'm super back heavy reliant, so I can just run all the floodgates. Right. I use my monster effects in field and or a hand and field, so I can use skill drain. Yeah, or uh, hand and grave. I don't care about field effects. Right. So yeah, skill drain. Um, or even funnier, you can also do. You can also do. I don't use my graveyard effects ever. Soul drain. I don't use stuff for my. I don't even run hand traps. Mind, Mind drain. drain. Right. You, you, with that kind of, with back row you can run a lot of weird things you wouldn't normally be able to run in more combo oriented strategies where you can like just poop out uh monsters like dark samorg and then set other stuff you can get really right. really interesting locks that your opponent then because then it becomes kind of a dual puzzle for your opponent to figure out right the other issue with diverse formats is that you can never quite plan for everything it seems every tournament you get these two or three cards or these two or three decks that you just weren't prepared for. And maybe now we're going into time because I'm having to read all of my opponent's cards. Yeah. Uh, a prime example of that would probably be the first tournament after all the new Marincess stuff came out and, uh, and quite a few people picked up Marincess. Right. Who's read Marincess before? Right. Out of curiosity, which do you prefer? Um, personally, I really prefer uh, more diverse formats. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, there's always that little nitpick in the back of my head going, you didn't prepare your side deck, you're going to... Burr, 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 burr. You know, it's always there. I just ignore it. And I'm just, you know, and just kind of go, okay, cool. Here's the stuff my deck can do. Right. Here's my hand trap lineup. My issue with diverse formats stems from there's so much variance. It's so luck-based compared to a tier zero format or a it, it's triangle kinda... even where you have everything is everything is based off of deck building and play there's very little luck involved yeah but it's then, so skill heavy but then of course you, of course and like i said a great example actually of uh the issue of, of, of the issue of the diverse format it actually came from a streamer where they were playing up against Kragen control and they set up the Kragen control lock with goes and match and they passed and went GG and and the streamer went I hate to tell you this buddy normal summon Marin says blue slug or not blue slug uh can't think of her name anyway normal summon Marin says and just kind of go off anyway that's rough buddy like ha as a Kragen control player how do you like and this was before the new Marin says stuff came out so like as a as a Kragen control player, how do you, like, adjust for Marincess? You adjust then? by going to the next round of the tournament. Yeah, exactly. You just kind of go, oh, I lose, because I used up all my resources to put out the Gozen Kragen lock. Right. And it just got poo-pooed. So, I am kind of going to cop out here. I like something where it's 
three to five meta decks. Yeah, uh, uh, more diverse than triangle. Let's let's say a pentagon format. <laughs> pentagon format. <laughs> like sure. like rock paper scissors lizard Spock. You yeah know? yeah yeah. So yeah, that was a big bang reference. I did it. What are you gonna do about it? All right. I think that'll wrap us up for today's episode. What do you think? Oh, yeah, yeah. I think we've talked enough. I also did a lot of rambling at the beginning and middle. Sorry. It'd be like that. That's we, okay. We are we're, we are both giant nerds. Right. So, of course, we want to thank all of our sponsors again. A huge thank you to Millennium Threads and Dragon Shield and ETB Games for sponsoring the show. And, of course, if you want to support the show at no extra cost to yourself, you can check out our Patreon. The link is in the description down below. You can check out Dragon Shield and TCG Player, whose affiliate links we have in the description down below. All you do is click them before you shop, and it costs you nothing extra to support the podcast for products you would already be buying. Also, you can join our Discord. We do do remote dual locals every Thursday in the server. They are free to enter. They are a lot of fun. You should definitely check them out. Follow us on Twitter. To, we have been doing giveaways and things like that. And, of course, if you just want to show your support for the podcast and you don't want to have to join Patreon or go spend money on TCG Player or anything like that, what you can do is you can, if you're on YouTube, go ahead, click the subscribe button. If you're not on YouTube, go to YouTube and click the subscribe button. It helps ring, us out a lot. Ring the bell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we are trying to get our YouTube numbers up, so if you're there, please help us and, out. And, you know, we only post on YouTube right now, like, twice a week. The, literally the same time as these episodes on, like, right. Spotify and But we're that. planning on doing a little bit more here soon. So, be sure to check out our YouTube. Check out, if you're on Spotify or Discord, Spotify or Discord, Spotify or iTunes, <laughs> give us a follow, give us a rating and a review. We really appreciate that. So, Thank you all so much for listening to today's episode of the podcast. And until next time, have a great week, everybody. Take care, everybody.